Hi, welcome back. My name is Stephen Lurson, artist and instructor in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm glad to be sharing with you some information that will help you not only make masterpieces, but get started. Because one thing I hear a lot about is when faced with a blank white canvas, how do I get started? If you have ever experienced the inhibitions, fear, or just not really, something that keeps you from moving forward freely and having fun with that, then that's what I want to talk about today. And hopefully, if you have some blank canvases waiting on you, today will be the day to get started on those. All right, so there are numerous reasons why some people may hesitate, why someone may buy the products to get started but never use them. So the first thing I want to talk about today is not knowing where to begin. All right. So there's a common problem. We are creative individuals. We are drawn to colors, materials, products. We go to an art supply store um, and maybe we pick some things out that we think would be fun to use. We get home, we set it up and we freeze because I don't know how the heck to combine item A with item B or how do you take these fluid things and turn it into an image? So number one tip, if you've purchased the items but you don't know how to get started, number one tip that I would suggest is find an inspiration image or groups of images that will help you establish what you want to do. Pinterest.com is great for that. I know my own personal account, Stephen Larson Art, uh, is filled with thousands of inspiring artists' images that I use. So yes, I have my own style. Yes, I have my own interests. Yes, I have my own goals. But all the time, I'm regularly doing that research of finding new images that will give me a fresh perspective on my own work. And sometimes, let me even know that something I wasn't even aware of is possible is indeed possible, and I will go for it just because of that. So number one, make sure that you have a group of inspiring images, whether that is magazines, print, photographs, digital on your phone or tablet or whatever it is, have that. Then whittle it down to whatever is your favorite. Once you know what you're trying to do, you could say, okay, I have my insp inspiration image. I want to work on something like this, but how do I get started? Here's the traditional method. Start with the background, whatever is furthest in the back, start with that first. And then work to the midground, overlapping elements of your background. Then work on the foreground up here. Uh, put this after the midground, which is after the background. All right. So just as a quick example, um, with this painting here, you have two owls there in the foreground, some gold leaf. Uh, the background is this green, uh, foggy color field. And then, so you do something like that first. Then you do all these painterly shapes that wrap around that are in between you as the viewer and the background. Then you would work on the foreground, which would be the owls. And then you would do the things that are on the surface, which would include the gold leaf that you may or may not be able to see because light has to hit it just so for it to really shine. But anyway, that's the example. Don't start with your, if you're doing a portrait, for instance, don't start with the face first. Start with the background and work your way forward for one main reason. Let's say you uh, draw out a sketch of your person, but then you do the background, right? You accidentally paint over your person's nose or your person's ear or whatever it is. No big deal. You haven't painted the person yet. So when you go to paint that, you don't backtrack. You're just doing it for the first time. Now flip that. Imagine you're painting a big canvas or a little canvas. You paint your person's face first, maybe the hair, and you've done the hair and it's going out in wispies. Now you have to paint in between all the negative space between the hair. And if you accidentally paint over the face with a slip of the brush from the background to the face, now you not only have to fix the background, but you also have to redo the face. And that's just backtracking. Nobody likes that. Does that make sense? Here's another tip. Join an artist's Facebook group uh, to create the opportunity to discuss your hopes, dreams, and ideas with others who will also be able to build on those hopes, dreams, and ideas and share their experiences that they've uh, had freely with you. Jump over a lot of the obstacles of learning the hard way and make it easier on yourself. 
be part of a community. There are numerous online communities that you can do that, even on Facebook, Donna Downey's uh, Facebook um, artist groups, my own. I have a Stephen Lurson online workshop artist groups uh, all on Facebook, and you can find countless others. These are valuable, especially when you are halfway through and you, you've hit a roadblock. What, what can I do to achieve this result? Get people's opinions. It's easy and it's fun and it's very rewarding when you not only receive, but you can give those uh, help to others. All right, lastly, and the easiest way, the most direct, time efficient way to get what you want is take a, an art class. Uh, I teach many art classes at Donna Downey Studios in Huntersville, North Carolina. So that's an example. Maybe you have some near you. Uh, get private lessons. Many artists will teach private lessons in varying rates based on who it is. But if you have an artist near you, such as myself, then we'd love to work together. And if, let's say you have no artists near you that you would feel comfortable working with, then there are countless online workshops where they teach you and myself teach you step by step by step each and every part uh, as if you've had no experience but in a respectful way. That way they're not skipping anything and you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to say, well, I'd like to do that, but I don't know how because the online workshop, you just play and follow along. You pause, back up, rewind, play again as many times as you want. And ultimately the goal is that you achieve the results you most want. Today's video was just about not knowing where to begin. The next video is going to be about um, not knowing what you need for starting. Let's say you know what you want to achieve, but you don't know the products that you need. So when you go to an art supply store or online to shop, you see a thousand options and don't know what is appropriate for you. I'm going to be talking about that next. So thank you and happy painting.